our Kickstarter discussion, a scientific action for climate change. Before I introduce my very youthful guests and uh, enthusiastic uh, stakeholders and activists in this, let me just give you a preamble that uh, since in pre-industrial times, the atmospheric concentration of uh, carbon dioxide has increased by over 40 percent. Methane has increased by more than 150 percent and nitrous oxide has increased by roughly 20 percent. More than half of the increase in carbon dioxide has occurred since 1970. Increases in all three gases contribute to warming of the earth. Scientists have examined greenhouse gases in the context of the past. Analysis of air trapped inside ice that has been accumulating over time in the Antarctica uh, shows uh, that CO2 concentration began to increase significantly in the 19th century after staying in the range of 260 to 280 ppm, those uh, parts per very, very interesting uh, stuff there, but of course we shall be getting the details. Ice core records extending back some 800,000 years uh, show that during that time CO2 concentrations remained within the range of 170 and 300 ppm uh, throughout what is described as the ice age cycles. This is a lot of science, even for the average Chris Higeni. But with me in the studio, I have uh, environmental researchers, uh, uh, Roderick Buhumre and Joanita Lacar, who are here to give us perspective on uh, the latest interventions, especially by youth leaders, to ensure that uh, the specter of uh, climate change gets the attention that it deserves. And uh, of course, uh, youth leaders take on the mantle. A very warm welcome to Morning at TV. Mr. Roderick Buhumre, I would like to begin with you to uh, first give us uh, or rather uh, take us through what you guys are up to when it comes to championing the fight against climate change at youth level thank you so much good morning to all ugandans uh, once again my name is roderick muhumure and as a student mm. of environmental science technology and management uh, we really do a lot of thinking and lab work that is much into the science, mm. simplify it, and then it is our duty mm. to break it down to the Ugandans so that they can understand on how to live because we are living in an environment and we cannot separate ourselves from the environment. Mm. So it is our duty to explain what exactly the environment is all about. As the youth, when we are kickstarting off scientific action for climate change, mm. it is not just a call for scientists. One thing I have to define that. Yeah. It is everyone to get involved into what we are doing. Mm. We have to look at uh, the mechanisms that we can do, how we can shape our careers and dreams as youths into in inclusive environmental activism. Especially if at, at all I'm doing maybe fine art, how do I model my pieces mm. that are indicating climate conservation? How can I be able to produce something? How can I utilize the waste material around my environment mm. to produce some piece that is very nice looking. If at all I'm a musician, how can I sing the message mm. of climate change to the people? Mm. That's what we are calling scientific. To be scientific is to be hands-on, mm. is to take a step, not, ju not to just riot and make the noise that we may <laughs> hear on the streets, but rather to do something. <laughs> yeah. Are you suggesting people should not go political, they should stay scientific? Addressing our climate change, mm. we have had enough of the noise. Okay. This is the time to be scientific, to do something, and that's why we are coming on board mm. with this agenda uh, on climate change. Mm. Yeah, so it is going to be something interesting, inclusive, and we call upon the youth out there, and mm. even our parents, our uncles, to come <laughs> on board. This is your opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> interesting there, Uncle Chris. All right, <laughs> <laughs> come to Joanita Lake. Uh, first and foremost, there's a lot of uh, misinformation or less information when it comes to the rollout of uh, climate uh, change and uh, climate crisis related literature and data. Uh, so many young people do not know what kind of predicament they are in, first as a cluster of society, but also as a community or as a country. True. First tell the youth that we are in trouble. Um, good morning. 
uh, to all our dear viewers. And um, I have been requested by the moderator <laughs> to tell the youths that we yeah. are in trouble. We are not just in trouble, but we are in big trouble. Oh. And um, that is the more reason as to why um, part of uh, the, the, the conclusions or the resolutions of the recent COP27 was that for everything, be it climate financing, be it climate education, for everything that is going to be climate related, there is need for us to involve the youths. And that is why we are here today. We are here to tell you that, you see, it is high time we geared up because at the end of the day, we are the bigger population, be it in Uganda or mm -hmm. regionally or even globally. So it is high time we took up that mantle and did the work by ourselves. We're not going to keep on waiting for government entities or um, maybe the global north or, you know, or different organizations to come up and do the work for us. Because at the end of the day, you see, when you have trees being cut down and when you have wetlands being exploited, the environment is being destroyed in itself. Mm -hmm. The climate is getting worse and worse. And the, 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 the generations of the 1990s are not going to be as much affected mm -hmm. as we are because at the end of the day, we are the future generations. So what am I trying to tell the youth this morning? That you see, we need to rise up and um, get involved and be scientific, be hands-on. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to say that the noise should not be made. The noise can be made, but in a very peaceful way. But there is also need for us to take up that action. That is why we are here today. I, I'd like to stay with uh, that conversation or tone because the average young person might be failing to understand, first and foremost, how the activities they engage in mm. affect or even make the crisis worse. Mm. And when you are at that point, I don't want to call it ignorance, no. but a lack of information, exactly. then it becomes very difficult to know what you're supposed to do no. to yes. make things better. Mm -hmm. How can they transition that, uh, what is no doubt uh, a predicament? Okay, so I'll start from uh, um, a point of the fact that um, the level of unemployment mm -hmm. within our country as a basis is technically very high. The more reason that's why you have so many youths running into um, aspects of carrying out deforestation in a bit of getting charcoal, right? Yeah. Charcoal to sell. So what are we trying to tell them? We are trying to tell them that um, there are other mechanisms in which you can actually earn mm. money from... Um, money for, for yourself That's you right. don't particularly have to go and cut down Destroy. trees yes and cut down trees he Roderick already mentioned you can you know sort of like recycle waste and make briquettes out of them which is equally something beneficial you're going to sell the briquettes and at the end of the day still earn your money you've been emphasizing on the point of um, lack of information that is a, a gap that has been there mm. and uh, today as uh, as as we we, we we come to you know sort of like present our case to Ugandans. We are also presenting a case of a plight where we need um, incorporation of climate change education within the syllabus. Mm. We think that that is the basic way or the, the major kind of channel. I'm not trying to say that it's a silver bullet, mm. but all I'm trying to say is that it's a basic kind of channel that we can use to educate the youths, to educate children on the fact there is, that there is need for us to actually go ahead and take action when mm. it relates to you know issues of climate change. Okay, Roderick Muhumre, I understand you are organizing uh, a youth leaders conference uh, due March, 24th March? Yes. Yes. Months. And uh, this comes on the backdrop of uh, a need to ensure that uh, youth leaders become focal uh, people in driving this particular uh, movement forward. Uh, tell us about the conference itself and uh, what we should expect in terms of uh, resolutions. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, one, before I talk about the conference, oh, mm -hmm. I'll supplement on the idea of unemployment idea. as a major cause for the climate crisis. Oh, Actually, right. in Uganda, we are not in a climate change session. It's a climate crisis already mm. because, uh, one, Uganda was crowned as the Pearl of Africa. Sure. Why was it crowned the Pearl of Africa? We have to look at, 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 we have to look at that. Yeah. Then when we realize the reason as to why it was crowned the Pearl of Africa, which has helped us, by the way, in mm. most cases, mm. we see at this state, are we worth being the Pearl of Africa with the activities we are doing? Mm. Now, in most cases, the activities we are doing are to earn a living. We want to survive. Yeah. But now, the conference that we shall be talking about on t 24th March it attracts youth leaders and uh, most especially the student leaders out there, mm. youth presidents, 
these institutions have environmental prefects or ministers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we are look targeting the uh, technical institutions of learning. These are marginalized institutions of learning that create a very big difference in mm -hmm. our countries. Mm -hmm. Plumbers are coming from technical institutions. That's yeah. right. Best civil engineers are coming from these institutions. So these are the people who are hands-on, who are producing the exact thing that the country needs. Mm -hmm. Why should we always put them aside when it comes to a major crisis like mm -hmm. climate change? Mm -hmm. So this conference shall attract all these people at Chambogo University, 24th March. 24th of March. Yes, and uh, it will be much more into climate awareness to the youth and also how we can incorporate climate uh, awareness, climate education into mm -hmm. these institutions. Mm -hmm. Because we may not wait on the government to act. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of bureaucracy and uh, Tell us about how you intend to do that because the National Curriculum Development Center has not been forthcoming on sharing information on adaptation of climate change education. Mm -hmm. I do not know whether you're going to continue the plea making or you have uh, constructed a clear a pattern mm -hmm. which can be changed into a curriculum all right thank you so much about that mm. it's very complicated as i told you uh -huh. but we have a very good solution to that uh, one what is that we are the next generation we are the youth we can best deal with our problems in our way because when I come up with an idea and we gather mm. the youth leaders, mm. the student leaders, we are telling them about climate education. We mm. are cr making them aware. They, they have resources that they use. Mm. It, is not, it may not be much more into education sessions, mm. but we can utilize our compounds. These are simple things that we are looking at that we can do. They utilize compounds yes, at home? Yes, taking compounds at home and even at school. But mm. we target pub mass public places oh, okay. whereby le these are institutions of learning. Mm. When we put posters and samples around the school, uh, talking about climate change. We believe that this message is going to transform these people. Then there are also systems of debate tournaments. Mm. Uh, apparently, we are all products of debate. <laughs> uh, and I, and I <laughs> is the vice president of debate at Chambu. Right. So you see, we can you organize debate sessions, we can organize football tournaments mm. as a way, but like themed under climate change. Okay. So that is the best way of now developing people's hobbies. And mm. climate change shouldn't be a job, it should be a passion. It should be a Personally, passion. that's my passion. Mm. I dedicated my life to environmental conservation mm. and I believe it's not just my own obligation also Uncle Chris you can do it oh, <laughs> <laughs> interesting there so my next question is regarding uh, the uh, climate financing yes and uh, seed funding is uh, critical to that mm -hmm. especially when it comes to innovations that are being uh, undertaken by many youth Chambogo University I believe is one of uh, the institutions of learning where innovations are uh, busting uh, to the scenes the uh, students are doing a lot of stuff and uh, they need money they need resources to be able to do that at that level of financing how is it rolling out is it are they receiving the money to do or undertake some of these innovations mm -hmm. before I come to the great aspect of uh, okay. climate financing? Ah, thank you so much. Mm. Uh, more to that, about seed funding for climate innovations or any innovations that are conserving the environment, mm. uh, we first of all have a, lo a program that is very detailed mm. and very much, uh, uh, how can I call it, follow-up, yeah. monetary follow-up is mm. going to be done mm. because we realize these youths are quick to get the money and use it for personal use. So how do we give out the discipline money? Discipline is lacking. Exactly. Yeah. Now we have to first... They are not necessarily them. quick. It's and a lack of discipline. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, we also look, as you mentioned, Chambu University has a lot of students, just like any mm. I institution in Uganda. These universities are supposed to be hubs for innovations mm. in the world. That is the system. That's but right. I don't know what happens when it comes to particular stages of life. People look at them as systems of just finishing education. Mm. So when someone does a research project, and then they finish it. They love it and they decide it on them for themselves. Yeah. And then we have to create a seed fund. And I appreciate the university management so far this time mm. because they have embraced the climate change. That's why they are willing to host mm. the climate change, mm. uh, the climate change conference, mm. and also attract students who come up with various innovations. Uganda has very, very brilliant students. If at all we have this idea of making b very funny memes, why can't we make very good innovations? Mm. And the music we are producing is good. Uh, the me mechan mechanics, whatever, coming up on board yeah. uh, towards climate change, they're very interesting aspects of life. So 
This funding is going to come from various partners mm. through the awareness. We are going to start with partnering with the different institutions. There is money that is given out mm. to every institution by the government. Mm. But now where does this money go? That's why it is our own action to follow it up. If we do not do it, that means we are putting ourselves in a position whereby the future shall blame us for not mm. taking our position at this time. So I wish to encourage people out there who are mm. thinking, the students, the young youth out there, please continue with whatever you are doing as long as it's productive for the country. This is the time for us to invest in us. Okay. Joanita Lacker. Yes, please. Climate financing in the greater scheme of things uh, seems to be something that government is also simply trying to come up with. Yeah. What I have here is uh, a report by uh, one Tony Musani, and uh, they are highlighting the fact that the Uganda Climate Change Act of 2021 that empowers the finance minister in consulting with water and environment counterparts to provide for climate change financing. financing yeah. What is the state of affairs when it comes to that deliberate effort by the government to enhance uh, climate change financing? I think this is um, the first time we are seeing government being deliberate, mm. but above all being committed. Um, ah. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's it's basically the first time. Yeah. Um, we have been having the issue of climate change conversations from time memorial, mm. and we as youths had expected that the government would probably, you know, um, take up the initiatives. I'll give you. Uh, a very vivid example. Most of the COPs that we've had mm. have always advocated the, the COP resolutions, including the recent one, has always advocated for issues of climate financing. Mm. But you see, the problem that we have had within the status quo is that we expect this financing to come in terms of grants and mm. in terms of donations. Mm. So in terms of being deliberate and being committed, it is the first time that we are seeing government. Have we seen the the implementation of this particular act on ground no mm -hmm. we haven't seen it mm -hmm. and even in events where we've seen government you know tr sort of like trying to come out to um, curb issues such as droughts uh, the recent kind of drought and famine yeah. in Karamoja, we've still seen that there are several loopholes. And so this is what we are trying to tell them. We are trying to tell them that there needs to be an aspect of commitment. You cannot just have something written down on paper, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then you're not going ahead to implement it. But above all, we cannot go ahead and wait, like I earlier on said, for aspects such as like mm -hmm. the Global North, whom we entirely blame. Several times we've come out saying, oh, we blame the Global North for the current climate crisis. No, we cannot wait on them. We cannot debunk entirely on them. Okay. So we need um, a government to go ahead and make sure that what is on paper is actually put into implementation. We need to see action. If we're saying climate action now, it doesn't have to sound rhetorical. Mm. It has to be um, action oriented. But above all, let me just go back to something that you had earlier on mentioned, which okay. is the aspect of seed funding. Seed funding, yeah. Yes. So for me, I technically believe that there is a big correlation between seed funding and climate education. Mm. I think the basic reason as to why many people or many youths in universities and secondary schools have not been so much inventive when it comes to um, producing maybe or sort of like thinking out of, out of the box to, you mm. know, sort of um, um, engage themselves in productive uh, kind of art inventories mm. that relate to climate change is because they have not been availed with this particular kind of seed funding. So we hope that going um, forth, especially with the forthcoming conference mm. that is going to um, officially launch the agenda of Chambogo on the aspect of climate change, mm. we hope that that is going to be a stepping stone to having seed funding sort of like more available. But above all, we also want to believe that it's going to be a platform to having entities like government government, Ministry of Water and Environment, Ministry of Finance, mm. local companies, yeah. right, um, coming on board to actually see to it that this sort of like gets to be achieved. You see, the problem is that we have reached a point where the only solutions we have are basically adaptation and mitigation mm. adaptation measures. Adaptation and mitigation measures. Yes, that is where we have reached with the aspect of climate change. Mm. Like he said, it is no longer um, just a talk. It is a crisis. It is a crisis. And it's a crisis that we cannot reverse. 
Okay, that's very inspiring to hear very young youth uh, leaders and uh, uh, researchers uh, espousing and uh, articulating some of these issues for your peers. Mr. Roderick yes. Mohumre, the core of youth in this drive cannot be overemphasized. Mm -hmm. However, women and children find themselves at the end receiving end of mm. many of the effects mm. which are adverse of climate change. Are you co-opting women leaders into the workings of the conference and uh, whatever you'll be rolling out? Yeah, and true, uh, women leaders are key. Mm. First of all, she's a female leader. I'm a vivid Away example. From vivid, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> like who is yeah. very dedicated that is right. to bringing females on board. Yeah. And towards the conference, allow me first make it clear. I love mm -hmm. to have a public that understands what we are talking about. Climate change is Lovely. very big. Please do. Now, climate change is, no, is something, according to basic knowledge, that starts from maybe we know for a long period of time, 30 mm. years. But now there is what they call interannual climate change. Like how we can know within this year what have we experienced and the aspects of climate change starts mm. from temperature rainfall and maybe the heat oh, the you talk about the weather. current heat wave that we are experiencing in homes ah, and, thank you, know, you so much the That's sun what is to. so ferocious to the extent that we begin to assume the gods must be fighting yeah. i you think see, the so sun is not just being ferocious <laughs> it's nature paying back yeah. nature paying back That's yes. wow. That's what <laughs> thank you you know thank you. in physics they said every action there's an equal mm, but opposite reaction. reaction so true. we attacked nature thinking that we could do away with it but trust me there's no way we can do away with it now nature is fighting back <laughs> for the so youth out there <laughs> Nature <laughs> <laughs> to So now, uh, I wanted to first break it down to that level so that mm. people realize what exactly are we talking about. Yeah. Now, these increased temperatures, me when I came to Kampala, actually, you're lucky that you still wear a jacket, uh, what people call coat. But call it uh, occupational hazard. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, like me, I cannot do that because yeah. Kampala is extremely hot mm. and the it is spreading to the rest of the country. It that is, is nice. very hot. Mm. With the other day in COVID, we saw Lake Victoria's waters rising above norm above the highest level which was recorded in the 1960s. Yeah. Now, those are the bioindicators that we are coming on board. Okay. But for us, I don't know what happens to man. We mm. try to shy away from it. Mm. Now, when it comes to the women, how they are affected, yeah. we shall start with our mothers who are down there. Not mm. these ones who are... In these fancy places. The boardrooms and yes, uh, exactly. in the Now, these are the people who are carrying out the digging sessions. Mm -hmm. These are the people who are looking for the firewood, yeah. and it's nowhere to be found. When you dig, you plant crops. We, most of us are subsistence farmers. Mm -hmm. And you plant crops, and do you know what happens? Sunshine dries everything up, mm -hmm. and there's nothing like production that you're making. And the man comes from the local bar and starts beating up the wife because there is no food. Now, mm -hmm. this is the domestic violence that is being caused by climate change. But we don't look at that. We are quick to come up with other solutions. We, we, even if to empower women mm -hmm. but you do not solve the exact problem we have food security exactly mm -hmm. food yeah. security there's nothing that we are going to do. even government will come on board on that mm -hmm. when they're giving us money for parish development model and also and so on and so forth without addressing climate change yeah. trust me there's nothing big that we are going to address but women are mm -hmm. included in this and i want to assure you uh we have invited more women than men mm -hmm. on the conference okay again when is the conference 24th march where at Chambogo University. Thank you very much. I'm afraid we are approaching the half hour mark and I'm going to have to uh, say my goodbyes uh, to you. Uh, Joanne Tella Kerr, researcher on environment. Yes. Many thanks for the perspectives that I'm you shared with us. And of course, many thanks to you to uh, Roderick Mahumra. We wish you the best of uh, success mm -hmm. when it comes to the issues that will be discussed uh, at uh, that uh, conference. I'm afraid time is out.